let y'all peace and bless us. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all doing all right, staying strong and solid in these terms that we're in. I hope that you're safe and protected. And I hope that the Most High gives you a peace of mind and comfort in these times that we're in. Now, today's message, I just want to do a church note from Jen DeLeon titled, What Are You Cuffed To? So I'm going to go ahead and read these church notes to y'all, and hopefully y'all can apply this to your life and it'll bless you, okay? And then we'll close off from there. So here we go. There are people, things, and thoughts in your life that you need to uncuff from. The things that, the things you love that don't love you back. Think about how to get away from the things that no longer serve you. In adulting, we pick up a lot of things, cuff things, in one season that we don't uncuff from when they're no longer serving us. You're still dragging along the ideas, things, perspectives, people that are no longer serving a purpose in your life. Cuffing season, a season where because of loneliness and desperation, you settle for a relationship that is way beneath your standards. When you're a child of God, there's a standard. Do you know how many things you're doing right now, you're living in right now, you're working through right now that is below the standard of what God has prepared for you? The way you view standard is how you view God. You thought rules, regulations, but it's what you get to do and do what you and what you get to receive. Some of you are in trash relationships and God has been telling you to come to a new standard because he's trying to protect you. I don't want that bacteria on your life, on your blessing. I don't want other people's DNA and what they put their mouth and hands on to be on the thing that I anointed just for you. Relationships are less about people and more about patterns. It's a pattern, so why are you confused when you get in a relationship and it doesn't go how you thought it would go? It's not about the people, it's about the pattern. You've been negative before it even happens. You planned your exit because of your disappointment, etc., etc. How do you change your patterns, changing your mindset? You're saying you wish God got you're saying you wish God would tell you to live here and move there. You find the same connections wherever you go. If you do not address your patterns, your mind is renewed by God's principles. If you just check off the to-do list to read your Bible but forgot the principle, what did you learn? What did you remember? What are you going to apply? What is it going to do into your life? If it's just checked off, you're just going to do the same pattern. There are many people practicing religion but not learning. Learning in and changing by principle. Until you allow God to change your mind with principle, you will always have the same pattern. You can get married, divorced four times, and they will all turn out the same way with different people because you won't apologize. You won't change your pattern. God's principles come with parameters. What if the parameter is only for protection? You're sleeping with 15 people and you call experience, but it's really a distraction. Many of the things that happen to you, it's not because God wanted them to happen. It's that you stepped out of the parameters into a war zone and got hit with what happens outside of protection. Why would God let this happen to me? Why would you go beyond the boundary he set to protect you? A lot of the things I've been cuffed to have not been in the parameters of God. God's parameters are always for protection. God told you not to move. He said, stay here. Cuffing is all about control. Whatever you're cuffed to is in control, whether it's money, an idea of your family, a compromise, comparison, criticism, curiosity. Some of you, even though you're cuffed to it, still think you're in control. You can never be cuffed and in control. Uncuffed from being successful and being purpose and complete your assignment. Successful changes every day. Is it having a house, having a plane, having multiple women? Some of you are cuffed to clothes. It doesn't have to be something deep. You're cuffed to presenting yourself a certain way because the real root is you care about what other people think of you. You're, cur- you're cuffed to something that is controlling you. Many of us are cuffed to something we love. God needs you to not be cuffed to these things because you're cuffed to things that you love but don't love you back. When you're out there putting it on the line for someone who isn't even checking for you, a lot of the things that we are cuffed to are robbing us of our own identity, our self-worth, and the ability to believe God. When you cuff to God, I don't have to worry about everything that's happened in my life. When I'm cuffed to culture and crazy, a job, baby daddy, everything, baby mama, everything. The reason God protects you is because he doesn't want you to get your power stolen. It's not that you have the thought, it's that you lay your head there, laying in the things that are actively trying to steal your power. There's no amount of prayer that can change your decided patterns. Parameters don't have to make sense. Why God? They didn't have to. You don't have to understand to obey. 
Obedience is never about outcomes. It's about honor. In this Google generation, we feel like God owes us an explanation. You feel like God is obligated to tell you the timing of his next move. The greatest version of you isn't the I can do anything version of you. It's the disciplined version of you, the one that has parameters and focus. I know what I'm supposed to do, and that ain't it. They said, you changed. No, I just can't hang with you and reevaluated the priority of my parameters. Some of the things we're being tied to aren't even being discreet. How can I contain you? How can I cuff you? How can I constrict your consistency? How can I compress your character? You fall in love with anything when you're desperate and lonely. Some of us are loving and giving our allegiance to something that doesn't even have the capacity to love us back. You never pick right when you pick from your pain because we haven't dealt with the pain to sit, sit still enough. God delivers us or free us from the, some of the things we were walking through. Your next choice will be worse because you're picking from pain. You're cuffed to abuse, to the cycles, to the deception, to the facade. You're cuffed if you don't deal with it. It's just going to repeat itself. Some of you say it's in the past. No, it's in your present. It may have happened in the past. Pain is proof you're alive. Even though it hurts, it proves you're still living. If you're still breathing, that means God is not done and still has a plan for you. The way to make it to the other side of pain is to actually deal with the pain. Untreated pain over time starts to affect every area. Many of us are still actively communicating and connecting with things that you know are trying to cuff you. Cuffing only happens with connection and communication. You flee from lustful you, you run away from it. Some of us are so prideful that we think we are better than we are. A lot of the things we're cuffed to are only able to stay and hinder us because we are communicating with it and staying connected to it. Some of your high school friends, you should never talk to them again. You know they're pulling you away from your calling, your frat brothers and sorority sisters. Arrogance when you're anointed, you're playing with stuff that that's going to take away your power. It's very difficult to say anything to anybody about something they're in love with because when you attack love, you send the people into the Romeo-Juliet mode and defend it. What are you entertaining that is threatening your life and purpose? What do you cuff to that's, exact, that's actually controlling you? Comfort ignores caution and leads to compromise. So comfortable you become careless. There are people, places, things that you're going to give them keys to your downfall because they have been wearing you down. Manipulation is nasty. Be very careful when someone uses what they know about you to try and take away what's great about you. Samson entertained Delilah for so long that he wants to die, but still doesn't walk away. He was in love with something that didn't love him back. Take inventory of your own life. What have what has what has you worried to death, frustrated to death? What has you at the place that you can actually uncover from, but you rather die than walk away? Consistent toxic connections lead to the cutting off of ca- of your calling. It's not just people. Your connection to fear, to poverty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You have relationships with the patterns that you make mess up the principles in your head and make you walk into all types of problems. The truth has a different tone. The lap you lay in can limit your life. The place where you trust where you trust your secrets. If it's beginning to bring you down, your speech is changing, your faith talk is changing, you're starting to become pessimistic where you used to have hope. If you don't give anyone the benefit of a doubt, that means your strength is about to leave. Assume God will still protect me when I step outside of his parameters. The worst thing about being cuffed to the wrong thing is not just the consequence that are temporary. It's losing the communion with God. You're going to realize you can't do it like how you did last time. God is here when you're ready to come back. You're cuffed to things that are trying to steal your vision. Would you please stop loving things that don't love you back? Where you lay your head determines your legacy. God can never heal what you won't reveal. And that's the church note, y'all. There you have it. All right. What are you cuffed to? We have to detach from these things that's hurting us, all right? This is a very good church note. I think all of us can apply this to our personal lives, you know? We have to always have a fresh start. We have to always let go of the old and into the new. We have to always be able to release and let go. So let's do that and let's keep it moving, okay? What I would love to do is close out. And as we close out, give all the glory to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and go from there. So here we go. 
He is the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. The Apostle of our profession, the Arm of the Lord, the Atonement Sacrifice for our sins, the Author and Finisher of our faith, the Author and Perfecter of our faith. He is the Author of life, the Author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the Beloved Son, the Blessed and Only Potentate, the Blessed and Only Ruler, the Branch, the Bread of God, the Bread of Life, the Bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, the faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest. Yes, yes, he's the great high priest. He's the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, King of Israel, King of kings and Lord of lords, King of saints, King of the ages, King of the Jews, the King, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the light of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Ahai, Yeshai, Yeshua, Mahamashim. Shalom, Barakathah, Shalom, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one. All right. He is the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God, and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection and redemption. Our righteousness, our sacrifice, Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, the son of the blessed the son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the build is rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the way, the truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life and the word. Hallelujah. Amen. We all praise the most high of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his begotten son died for our sins. Hallelujah. So there you have it, y'all. What are we still clinging on to and holding on to? What are we cuffing to, okay? Let's reflect and reevaluate, ask ourselves that. Let's do better and change our ways, all right? So there you have it. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life forward for the most high. I pray that you turn your life around for the better. And I pray that your relationship with the most high just gets better and increases. And that your life, you start getting more blessed and more open doors. And you're able to help more people along the way. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.